I'm Brent Joyce, Chief Investment Strategist at BMO Private Investment Council. It's Tuesday, October the 1st. Welcome to our Global Markets Commentary. It is the end of the third quarter and so far 2024 is shaping up as a rewarding year for investors. Well, not without surprises and some bumps along the way, the third quarter was nothing short of a Goldilocks rally. The list of assets that advanced many significantly during the quarter is long. Only a handful of the more than 100 global equity, bond, currencies, commodities, industrial sectors and bellwether company share prices that we track regularly are down on the quarter. Everything else is in the green. The year-to-date performance for major equity and bond markets is roughly the same. Of the dozens of equity and bond markets we track, only South Korean and Brazilian equity markets and the Japanese bond market are down on the year. It was a Goldilocks rally, not an everything rally, because a few select asset prices did decline. But these all feed into the not-too-hot, not-too-cold narrative. Consider that the weak spots were largely in the energy space, which is good for consumers, a weaker U.S. dollar, good for global growth, and shares of four of the Magnificent Seven, where it's pretty good for them to take a bit of a breather. You might be thinking, Goldilocks, wait, what happened to soft landing? We think soft landing has served its purpose. The idea of a landing was always about inflation only. Nobody wants the economy to land. But the belief is that the best way to bring down inflation is to slow the economy. There are exceptions, however. Economic growth can remain healthy alongside retreating inflation if the economy experiences increased supply or productivity gains. It has been more than two years since the COVID-induced global supply shock to goods, services and labor. And we've seen great improvement on these fronts. Additionally, many economies have slowed and so has inflation. While the U.S. economy continues to run above potential, this isn't terribly inflationary because the country is in the throes of a productivity boom. Capital markets are responding to this friendly backdrop. They are looking at a powerful alignment of falling inflation and smooth sailing economies like the U.S. or economies that are holding up better than feared, such as Canada, the U.K., and a pretty good chunk of Europe. At the same time, Central banks are reversing course and lowering interest rates, with the most important central bank, the U.S. Federal Reserve, finally joining the rate-cutting parade. The Fed jump-started its easing cycle by lowering the Fed funds rate a supersized half percentage point. While we're talking about supersized, markets received a jolt at the end of the quarter as China's central bank stepped up its stimulus measures significantly, and other fiscal measures are being brought to bear by the government. Historically, sizable bouts of stimulus in China haven't just helped the Chinese economy and stock markets, the impact has been measurable on Western markets too. The bottom line for us is we see a path to further gains, albeit more modest ones, as the fundamentals of economic growth, corporate earnings, inflation, bond yields, investor sentiment, and valuations all remain supportive. That's the way we saw the third quarter of 2024. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to you tuning in next month.